Good morning. Thanks for joining us for the Egg Report. Well, our network's Andy Schwab is on Capitol Hill this week, participating in the National Association of Farm Broadcasting's Washington Watch. They've been meeting with industry leaders, lobbyists, USDA leadership, and today meeting with several lawmakers. Andy spoke with Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack and asked him why USDA canceled the July cattle inventory report. We would have had the entire year to make adjustments and maybe some of those reports that were done in October, November wouldn't have been done and you could have shifted those resources. But when you basically have a budget that is flatlined where you have to absorb pay increases and congressionally directed funding takes more flexibility away from you and you only have seven months to absorb the cut, it's really hard. Of course, the main discussion item in D.C. is the Farm Bill. House Ag Chair G.T. Thompson has said he plans to have the bill passed out of his committee before Memorial Day. As we get deeper into the calendar year, though, passing the Farm Bill gets more challenging, but the ag industry is hopeful that we'll see legislative texts in the next couple of weeks. Well, El Nino has rapid sugar production in key growing regions like Brazil, India and Mexico, and that's causing sugar prices to rise. The resulting drop in Mexican sugar imports into the U.S. has tightened stocks to use, so USDA announced it would expand the tariff rate quota to increase the amount of sugar that can be imported under low tariffs. U.S. sugar producers, though, have been none too pleased with that decision as U.S. sugar production is expected to be near record highs this year. Well, thanks for being with us this morning. We'll see you back here for the Ag Markets. I represent a lot of what ranchers' wives are, where they marry into the family. Coming in to established ranch, the expectations of that is just absolutely overwhelming. You know, there's always stress with all families, but when you're not dealing with the stress outwardly, it will definitely impact everyone inwardly. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ag News. Well, higher input costs and struggling commodity prices are squeezing margins for farmers. Robobank says they're anticipating growth in fertilizer use despite the profitability challenges that farmers are seeing. Some fertilizers, though, are vulnerable to a decline in demand. Nitrogen fertilizer prices are on a downward trajectory, influenced by diminished demand and falling natural gas prices. The phosphate market experienced a price surge when China began curtailing exports, and potash is witnessing a robust supply increase due to increased exports from Belarus and Russia, leading to lower prices. Well, a steep drop off in the cattle futures to close out the month of April. Live cattle losing $5 for the month and feeders down three. That's going to likely weigh on the cash market, especially with large fed cattle offerings and continued uncertainty about avian flu. At Glendive Livestock Exchange, some wider price ranges on the way ups, but still strong values. Bulls topping at 169, cows at 154 and a half, and upper five weight steers in Glendive bringing 310 to 315. We are in the slow marketing time frame for lambs, but still at last week's sale at Pays, we saw prices 10 to 15 percent above last year. And technical pressure in the grain futures with delivery notices going out and the price rally shaking loose some bushels from farmers, which put some hedge pressure on the market. Winter wheat conditions fell a point in the crop progress report and about a third of the spring wheat is planted well ahead of the normal pace. Well, that's going to do it for today's Ag News. Have a great day.